Okay, two major types of chemical bonds. We've already talked about one. We talked about the ionic bond. In an ionic bond, you actually get the electrons physically moved. The electrons are transferred from one atom to another. So you create ions, and then you get that attraction between the positive ion and the negative ion. A covalent bond involves sharing electrons. And so in this example here, these two electrons are shared. Sometimes they go around this one, sometimes they go around that one. As opposed to when sodium loses that electron, that electron now is always over here. It never goes back to sodium. Uh, covalent bonds are much stronger than ionic bonds because of this, because the electrons are shared. Now, if you take sodium chloride, and you dissolve it in water, that ionic bond breaks. We'll talk about why a little bit later. So in a dry condition, in an, what we call an anhydrous condition, in the absence of water, no water, ionic bonds are pretty strong. I mean, you can't take a salt crystal and rip off all the little ion, uh, atoms, right, ions. But if you dissolve it in water, that's literally what water does. Water literally attacks that crystal of sodium chloride and rips the atoms, the ions, apart. But if you take something like uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is a molecule that contains covalent bonds. If you put carbon dioxide in water, it stays together. These covalent bonds do not fall apart. So that's why I mean, that's what I mean by um, covalent bonds are much stronger than an ionic bond. All right, so we talked about ionic bonds. You know how they work. Electrons get transferred. You get a cation and an anion. They're attracted to each other. You get an ionic bond. Covalent bonds are a little bit more complicated. If two atoms share a pair of electrons, it is called a single covalent bond. So we know that hydrogen, the atomic number of hydrogen is one. Hydrogen has how many protons? So how many electrons? So how many does it want? Two, right? Because it's got that's the simplest one. All it has is that little, that first little electron shell. Two hydrogen atoms hook up with each other, and they share. Each one shares its electron with the other one. And so these two electrons, sometimes they go around this one, sometimes they go around this one. So that is a single covalent bond. You'll see it written with a single line between the two hydrogen atoms. Oxygen has six electrons in the outer shell. It wants eight. So what it can do, it can hook up with another oxygen atom, and each one share two electrons with the other one. So we have a total of four electrons being shared, two pairs, four electrons. That is a double covalent bond. So a lot of times you'll see it written like this. Double covalent bonds are even stronger than single covalent bonds. Any covalent bond is stronger than an ionic bond. You could even have a triple covalent bond. Nitrogen. Most of the, the stuff in the air that we breathe is not oxygen. It's not carbon dioxide. It's nitrogen. Nitrogen forms a triple covalent bond with itself. So how many electrons being, are being shared? Six electrons or three pairs, right? So essentially, each one of these little lines represents a pair of electrons. Now, if you have two atoms that are identical sharing electrons, they share the electrons equally. These two electrons spend the same amount of time over here as they do over here. Same thing with oxygen. These four electrons spend the same amount of time <coughs> around each atomic nucleus. In the case of hydrogen gas and oxygen, we call these nonpolar covalent bonds. Nonpolar means equally, no poles, no charges. Electrons are shared equally. If you look at a water molecule, however, what you've got is you have oxygen that has eight protons in the nucleus, right? Eight electrons out here, eight protons in the nucleus, right? Hydrogen just brings one proton and one electron to the, to the table, right? What happens is oxygen needs two more electrons. It's got a total of eight, six in its outer shell. So it can share an electron with this hydrogen atom. It can share an electron with this hydrogen atom. And therefore, this one's happy because it's got two now. This one's happy because it's got two. And this is happy because this one's got eight. One proton, right? One proton, eight protons. Those electrons are going to be much more attracted to those eight protons than they are the one proton. Oxygen is an electron hog. It does not share well. 
So these two electrons and these two electrons spend most of their time over here. And every once in a while, you know, just to make it happen. Those electrons are not shared equally. We call those polar covalent bonds. Unequal sharing. And elements that are electron hogs, like oxygen, uh, nitrogen is another example. Oxygen, nitrogen. These are called electronegative elements. What that means is they tend to hog the electrons. They tend to keep the electrons next to them. And so they tend to be a little bit on the negative side. And so if you're looking at a water molecule, here's the oxygen, here's the hydrogen hanging off here, and here's the hydrogen hanging off here. These are single covalent bonds. Technically, they're sharing two electrons. But these are polar covalent bonds. Polar single covalent bonds. And what happens is, the oxygen, since it tends to hog the electrons, this end of the molecule is a little bit negative compared to this end of the molecule. The hydrogen side of the molecule is a little bit positive. The oxygen side is a little bit negative. So the whole molecule actually has poles, has a negative end and a positive end, a negative pole and a positive pole. So in many cases, Polar covalent bonds can result in the formation of polar molecules. The sodium chloride is called a compound, but it is not a molecule. Water is both a compound and a molecule. Oxygen gas is a molecule, but not a compound. <coughs> now, why is that? All right, so let's look at this. All right, sodium chloride is a compound, water is a compound, but oxygen is not. So what is it that these have in common that this one doesn't? A compound is anything that's made out of at least two different kinds of elements. You have compounded, you have put together two different substances. Oxygen is not a compound, it's just oxygen. It doesn't have anything else added to it. Molecules contain covalent bonds. Anything that contains atoms joined together by covalent bonds is called a molecule. Sodium chloride table salt. Those atoms are connected by ionic bonds. So they're not molecules. They're compounds. There is a chemical bond there, but it's an ionic bond. So if you put something like sodium chloride in water, it dissolves the ionic bonds. The ions separate from one another. If you put something, if you put a molecule in water, you can, the molecule will still dissolve. Some of them will. But the atoms are still hooked together. The atoms do not separate from each other. Water by itself will not disrupt the covalent bond. Water will disrupt an ionic bond. Okay, this is what I was getting at with the water molecule. You have a single polar covalent bond here and a single polar covalent bond here. And then the way this molecule is shaped, the entire molecule is also polar. There's a slightly negative side and a slightly positive side. Water is weird. Water does some weird stuff. One of the things that water does is water is attracted to itself. Because what will happen is the negative side of one water molecule will be attracted to the positive end of the second water molecule. And you get a third type of chemical bond called a hydrogen bond. Now, a hydrogen bond individually, one hydrogen bond, one attraction between the oxygen on this water molecule and the hydrogen on this, this is... One bond is very weak. A hydrogen bond is very weak. It's the weakest type of chemical bond that we're going to talk about. So if you were ranking bonds according to strength, weakest would be hydrogen, ionic would be next, and covalent would be the strongest. And a double covalent would be stronger than a single, and a triple would be stronger than a double, right? But if you put a whole bunch of hydrogen bonds working together... Not just individually, but if you take them, take them all together. If you've got a, a, a beaker of water and there's you know, 13 trillion hydrogen bonds in there, together they can create a strong force. Anybody ever do a belly flop off the diving board? What happens is you've got all that water in the, in the pool, and all those little water molecules are attracted to one another right there at the surface of the water. And so it's almost like a, a force field. It's a barrier. Olympic divers, how do they go into the pool? So what they're doing is all of that force of them falling down is concentrated on their little fingertips as opposed to on their bellies. So they do that to break that little, it's called surface tension, that force field in a way. 
that's created by the hydrogen bonds, each individual little hydrogen bond <coughs> working together between all those millions and billions and trillions of water molecules at the surface of that water. One hydrogen bond is weak, but together they can create a strong force. This is kind of a weird concept. This is kind of one of those that was hard for me to get into my head. What happens is underneath, the water under here, the water molecules under here, each one of these little dots is a water molecule, they're all equally attracted to one another. But what happens at this interface, where the air and the water touch each other, is called an interface. There aren't any water molecules up here to even out the, the pull. So what's happening is these water molecules that are on the surface of the drop, or on the very surface of the swimming pool, these are more strongly attracted. They're held on tighter because there aren't any water molecules up here to, to balance out the pull. Does that make sense? And so they're attracted to each other side to side, and they're pulled on by the water molecules underneath. And that's what creates that, that surface tension, that force. That's why when you wax your car, the water droplets beat up. That's the surface tension, trying to pull those water droplets in the smallest form. They're all being pulled toward the center of the drop. You know where contact lens? I wear contacts. Yeah. You know, the contact lens get dried out. It's all gummy. Yeah, because what happens is the contact itself really doesn't touch your eyes. You know this? There's actually a little film of water, a little film of tears between the contact lens and your eye. That film of tears, even if you don't have a contact lens on, it keeps things from getting to the surface of the eye itself. Another weird thing about water, particularly in the summer, we have humidity, we have water vapor, we have water molecules floating around in the air. And then you've got liquid water. And in liquid water, what happens is the, water's, the water molecules slide past one another. But because of the hydrogen bonding, because of, because of the attraction between one side of a water molecule to the other, water expands when it freezes. We all have had, probably dealt with um, burst pipes, right? Because what happens is water, as the temperature begins to drop, the water molecules begin to move more slowly and more slowly and more slowly. And then those hydrogen bonds begin to, to force the water molecules into this crystal arrangement, into that ice crystal. And what it does is it makes them, it doesn't let them slide past each other. They're, they're, they're actually further apart from one another. They're locked into this three-dimensional crystal. That volume of water actually expands as it turns to ice, and that's what ruptures the pipe. So hydrogen bonding between water molecules creates all kind of interesting phenomena. Now, just in case you didn't know the difference between a solid and a liquid and gas, a solid has what we call a fixed shape and a fixed volume. A liquid has a fixed volume but can assume the shape of its container, and a gas has neither a fixed volume nor a fixed shape. 